Hello and welcome to The Daily Oz. I'm Zara. I'm Emma. Tens of thousands of people have marched through Israel's main cities calling for an immediate deal to release hostages who remain held captive by Hamas. It comes after Israeli forces recovered the bodies of six hostages in Gaza over the weekend. Major unions have now called to shut down the economy, setting off one of the largest protests in Israel since October 7th. Protests have erupted across Israel as hundreds of thousands of people take to the streets to demand a deal that would see hostages returned and an end to the war. Now, it comes after Israel announced it had recovered the bodies of hostages in Gaza. So, Zara, a big development over the weekend, but this has been a near year-long conflict. Yeah. Can you bring us up to speed with what those developments were over the weekend? Yeah, so on Sunday morning, our time, Australian time, the world first learned that bodies had been found in Gaza. There was very little other information that was released at that time and the IDF, the Israeli Defence Forces, said that it was taking that time to identify the bodies and to tell the families of those people. Hours later, it was confirmed by the IDF that it had recovered the bodies of six hostages. There were three men and three women, and their bodies were recovered in a tunnel underneath Rafa in Gaza. The hostages were named as Kamel Gat, Eden Yeroshalmi, Alexander Lobanov, Almog Sarusi, Ori Danino, and Hirsch Goldberg Pollen. There has, of course, been very public campaigning to bring all the hostages home, the hostages Mm. taken on October 7, but arguably one of the more high-profile hostage names that listeners might be familiar with is Hirsch Goldberg Poland, and that's because of the campaign led by his parents. Yeah, exactly. So Hirsch was an American-Israeli dual citizen and his parents were extremely active in both the US and Israeli media and political landscapes. Just recently, his parents spoke at the Democratic National Convention before Kamala Harris was confirmed. Here's what they said at the DNC. There is a surplus of agony on all sides of the tragic conflict in the Middle East. In a competition of pain... There are no winners. Throughout their speech, the parents of Hirsch called for an immediate deal that would see their son and the other hostages returned and an end to the war in Gaza. So the DNC was in the middle of last month. Do we know if the hostages were still alive then? It's understood that they were alive and according to the Israeli Defence Forces, the hostages were killed shortly before they were found by the military. The Ministry of Health in Israel claimed that the hostages had been killed by multiple close-range gunshots within the previous 48 to 72 hours as the IDF was drawing closer to finding them. So the DNC, as you said, was a couple of weeks ago and it's understood that they were killed far more recently than that. So that is the information that was made public on Sunday when we found out about these six Mm. hostages. What was the response in the wake of that news? Almost immediately, hundreds of thousands of Israelis took to the streets to protest and to call for an immediate deal to be reached. And when we're talking there about a deal, they are asking for the hostages to be brought home and for an end to the war in Gaza. Israel's most powerful labour union, the Histat Rut, called for sweeping strike action across the country. We had the head of the union, Anon Bar-David, call on the whole country to come to a standstill and unite in a shared cry to bring the hostages back. He criticised the government for prioritising, quote, narrow considerations and interests over rescuing the hostages. It wasn't just the labour union that was out there in force. The Hostages Families Forum joined those calls for a strike and said that it was in order to achieve the immediate implementation of a deal to release the hostages. So what we have seen now is that workers from a range of industries spanning both private and public sector jobs really all took to the streets to strike. Many turned out in Tel Aviv and protesters also gathered outside PM Netanyahu's office in Western Jerusalem. They could be heard chanting things like now, now, and they were urging, as I said, the government to reach that deal to release the hostages immediately. So this very broad and intense kind of protest action on the Mm. streets of Israel calling for a deal, which has been in the works for months, it has felt like we've been maybe close to Mm. a breakthrough every so often, that there seems to be some momentum, that things are aligning for a ceasefire deal. 
but of course that hasn't happened yet. What is the latest on a deal? You're right. It has felt like we've been on the kind of precipice of reaching a deal for a while, but it hasn't happened yet. For many, many months, countries, including Qatar and the US, have tried to mediate talks to broker a deal between Israel and Hamas. That deal would see a ceasefire in Gaza, where the Gazan Health Ministry says that 40,000 people have been killed, and that that ceasefire would be in exchange for the release of the remaining hostages. We believe that there are some 101 remaining hostages still. In a statement over the weekend, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu blamed Hamas and said that it had refused to hold genuine negotiations. On the other side, Hamas has repeatedly blamed Israel for not agreeing to a permanent ceasefire. And that seems to be this point that keeps coming up in negotiations. Okay, so these latest pushes internally in Israel from Israeli people themselves Mm. are for that deal to happen quicker, for this agreement to be expedited. What has the political response been to those strikes? Yeah, there has been quite a significant political fallout. So Israel's opposition leader, Yair Lapid, joined protesters in the city of Tel Aviv. And those protesters were really coming out in force against the Netanyahu government. In a post about the protests, he said, the people of Israel came en masse to tell the cabinet of death, that's what he's referring to the government as, we want the hostages alive at home. They can't keep dying there. That's a direct quote from Lapid. It's also interesting to note that a recent poll that was published by the Israeli broadcaster Channel 12 said that more than two-thirds of Israeli voters don't want Netanyahu to run as prime minister again. So that gives a bit of a sense as to the kind of political unrest that is brewing at the same time as the country continues its nearly year-long war against Hamas in Gaza. In terms of the protest action, the strikes that we've seen Mm. on the ground across Israel this weekend, has the government responded to that? We heard from Finance Minister Betsalel Smotrich, who asked national authorities to stop the strike from taking place in the first place. He said, and I quote, these issues are not the subject of a strike by labour organisations and there's no connection between them and labour relations in Israel. I think I should just clarify that he's there not talking about the Labour Party. can be confusing when you're listening, but he is referring to the union movement there. He accused the union movement of trying to advance a political opinion. The strikes, though, are scheduled to continue throughout the week, so it will be interesting to see if the government can stop them or whether it continues to pick up in you know, momentum and significance as the week goes on and as more information about those hostages is released. Before we wrap up today, Zara, I just wanted to ask you, with such a groundswell against the government in Israel and, you know, a seemingly mounting kind of groundswell against Netanyahu, is there an election coming up? Is there a vote where that kind of sentiment is going to be put to the test? Another Israeli election is not set to happen for a couple of years still. And when he was asked earlier this year, Netanyahu confirmed that he wouldn't go to an early election uh, during the war. That said, he could be ousted, um, but I don't know that that would be a likely scenario when there is so much upheaval and so much conflict in the region. So who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But there certainly seems to be this growing discontent domestically. We'll wait and see what happens. Thank you so much, Zara, for taking us through that today. And if there are any steps towards a deal made in the wake of these protests and strikes, we will continue covering this issue on The Daily Oz and here on the podcast. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of The Daily Oz. We'll be back again with another episode tomorrow. But until then, have a great day.